Hi everyone, we're back. I'm gonna continue our discussion on chapter eight, maybe get further and finish it up. Anyway, I hope you guys are getting something out of these videos. Uh, what I've found is um, now that I'm homeschooling my son and daughter, uh, as basically every other parent is um, that lives in middle Georgia, uh, at least, um, we all uh, are trying to learn how to be school teachers, right? Um, and what I found is that my son Finn learns more from watching YouTube than, or at least gets excited about learning from YouTube more than uh, he does learning from dad, like normally, you know. Um, so, like, he gets excited about these these videos that I'm I'm making, uh, and I don't know. It's funny he he watches them intently, but if I'm working with him on his own schoolwork, it's it's not as interesting to him. Anyway, let's start off with a theorem. First theorem in the section uh, that says if G, so an element G is an element of a an external direct product of, I don't know, let's say K finite groups. So all the GIs are have finite order. Um, then let's recall what what that means. So of course an external direct product are just ordered K tuples in this case. Right? So each each uh, of the components is in the component um, group and the multiplication is uh, component wise. So that means, so then this is true and the order of G, you might guess, is the lowest common multiple of all individual orders. This seems intuitive, uh, perhaps, but let's go ahead and, and prove it um, rigorously. It's proof. So we're going to let the lowest common multiple be of the, all the orders. Let's say that's L. Then, because the, the multiplication is component-wise, if you take G to the L, that's definitely going to be G1 to the L. Um, and then G2 to the L, and I'm in my kitchen, so people are coming in. <laughs> you know, we do what we can do. So all of the all of these guys, right, are to the L. And since it's the lowest common multiple of all the the orders, right, each of these needs to go to the identity, right? Well, it needs to be in the identity because it's a multiple of the order of G1, this is multiple of the order of G2, and so on and so forth, right? So um, that's definitely going to be the uh, identity of our group, right? So certainly 
it's oh this was be okay. certainly we know that the order of g is less than or equal to l okay now we need to figure out um the opposite direction so now we need to say well why is l the smallest such multiple of g that works well suppose g to the t is the identity okay on yada yada okay um then right the each of the gi's to the t have to be the identity in gi that's if and only if right by the definition of of um, the order of an element in a group right uh, the order of gi must divide t but then t is a multiple multiple of all the orders of gi and that must mean the order of g is less than or equal or sorry is greater than or equal to l L is the lowest common multiple. Oops. Make this work. Right, L is the lowest common multiple. So that's that's what we want to show. Yay! We proved something cool. Okay. What's next? So let's do an example. Oh, I keep doing that one. Writing with my fingers easier, I think. All right, so for for instance, um, let's find the order, or let's figure out how many elements of order two. That's, yeah, there we go, are there in G, which is Z mod, ooh, uh, two million? External direct product Z four million okay and then you can see sort of how this works now in a cyclic group right there's exactly one element of each order for any divisor of the order of the group that we we proved that before in class and it's in whatever section the cyclic group uh cyclic groups are so we know that um for g to have order two right means that lowest common multiple of G1 comma G2, uh, or absolute value of those guys, not absolute value, but order. Okay, what? Let's let sorry. Let's let little G be in big G. So G is an element of this external direct product. So it's an ordered pair. Oh, work. Okay, that's supposed to say G. <laughs> oh, that's pretty ugly. All right, let's try this again. Uh, the fact of the matter is that means uh, 
at least one of these things has order two in their respective groups. Of course, there's only one element of order two in each uh, in each of the component groups. So that's really easy. We know what the elements are that have order two, but lowest common multiple of the elements in little g, the components in g, must be two. So that means one of these has to be two, but the other one could be one, right? So there's only a few possibilities, right? So um, G1 could be uh, taken from uh, zero, which is the identity in Z mod two million, or one million. And G2 could be zero, well, I should say, is an element of one of these sets, zero or two million. And, but at least one of them has to be the non-zero one. You can't have both zeros that order to be one. So, G is equal to one of, you could have zero, two million, uh, one million, zero, or uh, one million, two million. I'm probably not putting enough zeros here. I'm not paying that much attention to it. Anyway, that's the answer. And there's much rejoicing. Yay. Okay. So now let's um, do another cool thing. Let's see what number was on three. Another thing we can prove about external direct products that we've been probably hoping we could prove this whole time in class. Ah, but just dying to prove this. Uh. So that if um, Z mod P plus Z mod Q, when is that cyclic? If and only if. So, right, we know that. Um, Z mod 2 million and Z mod 4 million, it's not cyclic, right? I mean, I can't find anything with order, what is the uh, 8, 2 times 10 to the, 2 times 10 to the 6, 12, 2 times 10 to the 12. <laughs> uh, there, there's nothing that there is there uh, that that we could generate this group, and the reason for it is because um, these guys have orders that divide one another. Okay, so anytime I have anything in here, if I do it enough times, it'll go to zero there when we need it to not. So uh, it turns out, if and only if. P and Q are relatively prime. Okay. And the proof is it's pretty easy. So if we let um you know a generate oops that's, so we got two cyclic groups right z mod p and z mod q um let's use multiplicative notation just for giggles here let a be an element that generates z mod p we know what that is it's anything that's any number one or p minus one, for example, or anything in the unitary group 
uh, for uh, u of p. Anything that is relative prime to p will generate z mod p, but um, just if this were any cyclic group, it didn't have to be uh, written in with modular arithmetic in mind. B is the generator for Z mod Q. Then apply the theorem to the, the element A, B, right? Order that is the lowest common multiple of uh, the orders of A and the orders of B, right? Well, that's going to be PQ. So let me give the, let me get more space here. So the lit, remember the lowest common multiple of P and Q is, we, we proved this in our homework long time ago, P over Q times the GCD, P and Q, right? And that certainly is equal to the order of A times the order of B, right? Over one, okay? Anyway, this is, this guy here is the order of A, B. The reason why we know that it's uh, P over Q, this here is the order of A, that there is the order of B, I should make these in different colors, maybe I will. Okay, so just applying the theorem here. Work. All right, and that's what we needed. So that's equal to p over q. Not p over q, p times q. Yay! And so um, that's all we needed to show. All right, so that means, so there's some corollaries here. Two corollaries. Corollary one, uh, G plus H, sorry, G external Dirac product H is isomorphic to a cyclic group if and only if the order of G and the order of H are relatively prime. That's just a restatement of what we just proved, um, except uh, not using uh, the cyclic, not using the idea that G and H are cyclic themselves. Um, wait, no, no, they have to be cyclic. These are G and H have to, are cyclic. Yes, we can't do that in general. Relative prime and, right, G and H are cyclic themselves. Right, that's what we proved. Because we have to have G is uh, generated by the element A and H is generated by the element H. Anyway, um, that's just a restatement generally using different kinds of notation. Another corollary is that um, we can use induction on K shows that this this is true if we do external direct product of K 
such uh, cyclic groups. Implies that G1, external direct product G2, external direct product dot 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 GK is isomorphic to Z mod N, a cyclic group on N, whatever the order is of those things. Um, if and only if, well, when, sorry. The GI are all isomorphic to some cyclic group, N sub I, okay? Uh, as if and only if the greatest common divisor of all the orders of those cyclic groups uh, are relevant, are, is one. So the GCD of N sub one, N sub two, all the way to N sub K is one. Right? What does that even mean? Uh, that that doesn't make sense. Let's let's write it this way. Make this bigger. There we go. Yay! I can erase. Okay. Any take any pair of the orders of the groups, then the GCD will be one, right? So GCD of n sub i n sub j is one for all i not equal to j between one and k, right? So anyway, you get it. All right, so I think I'm going to stop there, and we're pretty much done with with uh, this chapter. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, don't touch your face. I think uh, if if there's anything more, I'm going to post it as an addendum um, written in tech, like I did for the last video, rather than make a whole new video. Um, so look for those in the um, video lectures content browser item or and or lecture notes content browser item. Of course, the lecture notes for this will be on there. If you have any questions, you know where to go. Email me uh, in D2L or use the um, the uh, message boards for that purpose. Thank you. Bye.